afternoon and welcome to a very beautiful Norfolk Island. Norfolk Island, for you folks who don't know, is one of Australia's small handful of external territories. It's located around 1400 kilometres off the coast of the nearest point on the east coast of Australia. It's actually closer to New Zealand, that's how far remote it is out in the Pacific Ocean about some 800 kilometres to the south, not too far from New Caledonia as well, which is about 800 kilometres north. Had a couple amazing days already exploring this amazing, beautiful, subtropical gem of an island out in the South Pacific. Visited the historic settlement of Kingston and also the beautiful beaches and bays around that area, Emily Bay, all that sort of stuff. Also walked around the main settlement of Burnt Pine, which is a very cool little town as well. Anyway, today we're at the Norfolk Island National Park. And as you can see over here, this is the road that leads up to the Mount Pitt Lookout, which is the second highest mountain in the whole of Norfolk Island. Over here, however, is the entrance of the Norfolk Island National Park and all the walking trails. So without further ado, let's now head to the start of the tracks, which are just over here. And just like that, here's our trail information for all the walks that you can do in Norfolk Island National Park. It's not a bad map itself. As you can see, all these different trails should give you some pretty good panoramic, sometimes 360 degree views around the island. Today, I particularly want to see Mount Pitt Lookout and also probably go up to the summit of Mount Bates. They're the two highest mountains on Norfolk. I believe there's only one metre separating them in total height. Don't have access to mobile phone reception here on Norfolk as Australian uh, mainland phones don't work here. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Mount Pitt's 319 metres and Mount Bates is 320. Um, good things I have uh, from the Parks Australia website, downloaded some more detailed information about all the different walks that you can take. As you can see, most of them range anywhere from about 300 metres to uh, two kilometres in distance. Uh, you, they mostly require a moderate level of fitness. So yeah, it can be quite steep here on Norfolk. So here we are, I think we'll start on the old mountain track, uh, at least go up to Mount Pitt and then at a minimum go up to Mount Bates. Depending on how we go for time, we might even try and get out to Captain Cook uh, Monument and also um, the other far corner of the island, Redstone Link Track, which gives views out over Bird Rock. Alrighty, without further ado, let's now enter the National Park and it should be a good day for some walks. For your information, there's a lot of free roaming livestock here on Norfolk Island, particularly a lot of free roaming cows and that. It's a very pristine environment, so that's why you often see, um, that's often why you see gates and that, so make sure you do close them. So yeah, here we go. The first section of the walk is Old Mountain Track, 540 metres. All right, let's do this. Alrighty. As we start our walk through Norfolk Island National Park now, just a little bit of information about the National Park itself. Uh, Mount Pitt and the National Park is about two to three kilometre walk from uh, the main settlement of Burnt Pine. Uh, walking, driving, pretty much the same distance. There isn't much thing as walking paths on Norfolk Island, except for the main strip through the centre of town. Everywhere else, if you're walking, you are going to be walking on the road, or at least on the side of the road. Kylan might be a fairly tiny compact island. I think it's about eight kilometres long by five kilometres wide, something like that. Uh, but keep in mind, there's over 120 kilometres of roads on Norfolk Island. For most visitors to Norfolk Island, it's always highly recommended that you do hire a car. They cost about $70 a day, very much well recommended. Although, 
Lloyd, well, to be honest, I haven't hired a car. I did consider one, but yeah, I've managed to walk pretty well all around the island. So if you do want to walk on Norfolk, it is doable, but you do have to allow plenty of time and the walking's not always easy either. It's quite windy and hilly, many of the roads. So just keep that in mind when it comes to, when it comes to deciding whether to hire a car. So yeah, just keep that in mind when it comes to deciding whether or not to hire a car or to wing it doing walking. You can also do tours as well. There's a few different tour operators on the island, perhaps if you prefer to do it that way. If you do decide to drive, your Australian driver's license, your New Zealand driver's license, most Western driver's licenses should work just fine here on Norfolk. Anyway, back to the trail itself, this very first part, the old mountain track, it's certainly very heavily vegetated. The, the grass certainly hasn't been uh, mown for a very long time, if ever, by the looks. So already it's quite, quite a demanding walk. But yeah, very picturesque scenery indeed. So yeah, a few practical tips for traveling on Norfolk Island. First thing you've got to remember, it's an incredibly remote territory out here in the South Pacific. We're literally some 1400 kilometers off the coast of Australia and we're 800 kilometers north of New Zealand. So that means the considerable isolation of the territory does mean it's a little bit different to living on the mainland in Australia. So first things first, regardless of the time you visit, bring plenty and plenty of water for you, especially if you are walking on Norfolk Island. Not the water's dirty or anything like that, but it's not always drinkable everywhere you go on Norfolk Island, particularly anywhere near the beaches or national park. It's not gonna be drinkable because it's all, you know, rainwater collected stuff. It's not like they have a dam or anything like that. It may be okay to drink in your hotel, but yeah, certainly not out on the trail. So bring plenty of water with you. Also the weather conditions, uh, it's pretty mild island, Norfolk Island. There's not a huge variation in temperature. Maximum temperatures on Norfolk are around 18, 19, 20 degrees in winter and around 25, 26, 27, 28 or so in summer. Minimum temperatures are only a couple degrees cooler than maximum temperatures usually. Interestingly enough, it looks like we're back on Mount Pitt Road for some reason. The so first confusing part of the walk doesn't tell you whether you continue on the road, doesn't tell you where you continue on the road, go on that trail over there or continue up here. This looks like a path, so hopefully it will take us in the right direction. But yeah, going back to the weather itself, here in January, the weather is absolutely idyllic. It's beautiful subtropical conditions. Uh, the minimum temperatures at night time, about 23, 24 degrees. Then in the day, it's only a few degrees warmer, about 25, 26. Could be a few rain and could be a few showers and thunderstorms around tomorrow. So good things we're doing this walk today. But yeah, one thing I will say, especially in 
summertime here on Norfolk is that it's incredibly humid. It's pretty well above 80% all day long and close to 100% at night time. So yeah, do bring plenty of water with you because you will work up a sweat. Even though it's not full blown tropical conditions, it's still very humid and you will sweat pretty easily. Also bring plenty of sunscreen or cover up with long sleeve clothes as the sun is incredibly bright here. The UV gets to about 13, 14. So but don't be tricked. Even though it might seem fairly hardly subtropical, you will get absolutely burnt to a cylinder, even on an overcast day. So yeah, pretty poorly signposted this track. Only a couple hundred meters on, and I'm not sure if I'm on the track or just wandering off the track already. But yeah, with no mobile data, you really want to download the maps beforehand. Well, that will only generally show you typically driving distance. That will only typically show you driving directions. So it's not all that helpful if you're doing a hike. It did say this part of the first track would be steep. So this is certainly steep, so hopefully it's the right track. Do bring proper footwear with you as well, because it's pretty steep and could be quite slippery, especially after rain. Because this track is so steep, I'd probably recommend maybe taking the main road back down. Because it's always harder going down than up in my opinion. And just like that, welcome to what appears to be the summit of Mount Pitt. The walk was getting very, very sketchy, so I wasn't sure if I was really on the right track. So I've decided to walk up what I thought was the main road but it looks like just a regular track. So hopefully this is the main track now. There's absolutely stunning views of the island out over there. And just like that we've made it to the summer of Mount Pitt. I wasn't really sure if that initial track I was taking was the correct track. It was getting incredibly dicey there so I made a beeline for what I thought was the main road but it looked more to be like a fire track or a walking trail and that came right out at the Mount Pitt uh, look out, so that's really good. As you can see here, absolutely stunning 360 degree panoramic views of the island. Out over there, I think it's Phillip and Nepean Island. You've also got the Norfolk Island International Airport over there. We'll be flying on Air Chathams on ATR 72 later on the week on Thursday. So really looking forward to that one. I think there's just one flight coming in today. I think it's a Qantas 737-800 from Brisbane. I think that comes in in about an hour's time. So you never know, we might be able to see that coming in. But yeah, incredible to think we're pretty well out in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the South Pacific, so far from Australia and a considerable distance from New Zealand and New Caledonia. But yeah, absolutely beautiful up on the top here. A little bit of history about Norfolk Island here. It's got a very interesting history, this island. A lot of strategic geography to Norfolk as well, dating back to the World Wars. Very strategic geographic place indeed. Alrighty, now let's continue on the summit track, which is supposedly an easy 500 meter walk, despite all those stairs there, which will take us over to the highest point on the whole of Norfolk Island, that being Mount Bates. 
surprisingly enough, even though it's 500 meters to the highest point on North Oak Island, uh, it's only actually going to be a one meter higher than where we started on Mount Pitt. So yeah, what a shame to Mount Pitt that it missed out on highest point on North Oak by just one meter. Anyway, it is what it is. We're now going to walk this 500 meter track to elevate one meter in a total from 319 meters to 320 meters. Let's see how it goes. I believe this one here, you do have to um, take a track. I don't think you can drive up here like you can to Mount Pitt. Little bit more cloud cover coming in now so it's a little bit cooler now but still very very humid but yeah it's nice that there's nice uh, resting spots up the top there take a bit of a breather and now nice and uh, relaxed energized ready to go for the next part of the walk so some spectacular views of the coast of the island down there Nice little hut there to take a rest if you like. How good's that? So yeah, Norfolk Island, if you love nature, walking, hiking, the great outdoors and just, you know, the laid back lifestyle that's somewhat disconnected from the rest of mainland Australia and the rest of the world, you're going to absolutely love your time in Norfolk Island. Might be a very small island, which you can literally see all of it from the top of Mount Pitt where we've just been. It's surprisingly a lot to see and do there. You certainly won't go wrong hiring a car because there's 120 kilometers of roads but yeah if you're up for a walk there's hours and hours and hours numerous trails hikes and scenic walks that you can do all around the island beautiful Norfolk Island has absolutely beautiful bays and beaches for swimming such as Emily Bay but it's also got rugged coastlines with steep hills and all that sort of stuff. In the interior of the, in, on the interior of the island you also got really lush farmlands as well and yeah really nice hills and most importantly amazing pine trees and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, definitely a better trail than the first one I took up to Mount Pitt. Not sure if I was even on the trail, to be honest. It wasn't very well signposted. But got there and then, this looks like a much proper trail. So you shouldn't get lost on this one. Once we get to the Mount Bates Summer, then I believe there's some more loop tracks that you can take around there. Been quite overcast now so fingers crossed it's not going to rain don't mind a little bit of rain but um my whole new wireless microphone set up hooked into the media mod it's not going to be waterproof if it rains so i'd have to get out my other case
almost looks like it might be about to rain pretty soon. Fingers crossed that rain can hold off for a few more hours until I get back to the hotel. Definitely got a very tropical feel to it this afternoon. Very, very humid indeed. But yes, yeah, certainly not overly hot. Alrighty, summit track is that way. We're on the right track by the looks, that's good. Alrighty, let's have a look at the map to see where we are. So we're nearly at the top of Mount Bates. Once we're there, there's plenty of walks. Looks like I can take the Red Rock track. Here's our map of where we are. Looks like we're near Mount Bates Summit now. Once we're at Mount Bates, lots of tracks we can take. Looks like we can take the Red Road track and the Brittle track to get to Captain Cook Monument. That's probably the furthest point on the island I'm thinking of walking. And there's plenty of other tracks as well. So let's get there now and see what we're gonna do from there. Anyway, let's now continue up to the summit track. And just like that, I think we might have reached, or be about to reach the summit of Mount Bates. Interestingly, during World War II, Norfolk Island appeared to be an important airbase and refuelling station for service personnel moving between New Zealand, Australia and the Solomon Islands. Garrisoned in 1942 by Air Force, a unit of some 1,488 servicemen from New Zealand. So yeah, very interesting history here on this island. It was under British control to 1914. It's absolutely stunning up here. Mount Bates, here we come. Definitely a little bit better view on the other mountain, but still pretty cool indeed. So absolutely unbelievable views again here from the top of Mount Bates. Not quite as 360 degree panoramic as nearby Mount Pitt. But yeah, a nice cool little view out over there of what I think is Anson Bay. Shame I didn't actually hear it come in or see it come in. But there's our Qantas 737-800. Just arrived from Brisbane over in Queensland. About a 2 hour and 15 minute flight I believe. It's only arrival in today. I think on Thursday they also fly to Brisbane where there'll also be a second flight with Air Chathams with ATR-72 that I'll be taking down to Auckland. So yeah, if you've ever flown into Norfolk Island before, it's an absolutely stunning place to fly into really needs no introduction. So I'm sure those passengers on that flight there, particularly those seated on the left hand side are being treated to an absolute treat flying in on this partly cloudy, humid summer afternoon here on Norfolk Island. Alrighty, let's now have a look at the Red Road track. It's a moderate walk, 1.7 kilometres. I believe it does link up with the Riddles track, which will take you down to Captain Cook's lookout. Fortunately, the filming with the GoPro has gone a little bit pear-shaped. When I got to Mount Bates lookout, I went to do a battery change on my GoPro, also my GoPro handle. Uh, also my GoPro Volta handle which is essentially a power bank in itself that was flat as well and so yeah I went to replace it the little pull flap on the battery that you use to pull out the battery uh, came detached 
and somehow the battery is now jammed in the camera and I've not, six, not been successful in trying to wedge it out and I don't really have any tools on me and I don't have foam reception to do any troubleshooting. So I really don't want to jeopardize my GoPro until I can find a way to safely resolve the issue without hopefully doing any damage to my GoPro because I don't want to jeopardize any of the future filming on the trip. Anyway, luckily I've got my DJI gimbal that I packed just in case of an unforeseen circumstance like this because they usually happen more often than you might think. So yeah, I can continue filming with my gimbal. Although yeah, I don't have the correct setup for the road microphone so the audio might not be as good. Anyway, here's the red road track that will take us to the brittle track that you can take down to Captain Cook look out so yeah let's have a quick walk down here it's getting late to, in the day now about 4 30 so i want to head back towards town pretty soon so yeah i may or may not be able to make it to captain cook lookout but we'll give it a try see how we go On the flip side of using an iPhone, I think they usually provide a little bit better footage in low light conditions, so I guess that's the flip side of the situation. But yeah, just really annoying that happening. I've lost quite a lot of time trying to fix it to no success. Hopefully I can fix it when I get back to the hotel. We have a little bit of help with a tutorial hopefully on YouTube. But yeah, really do want to get to Captain Cook's lookout today. If I go there tomorrow, it's going to be about a standalone 11 kilometer walk. But yeah, I need to be back in town by about 7 o'clock at the latest. There's only a few food places close about 8 o'clock. Beautiful walk this one. Hopefully it doesn't rain though, could get a bit slippery. It's interesting, there's a pedestrian bypass there, that's interesting. Makes life a little bit easier with the stairs. Not much easy. We're back on the travel now. I do have the right equipment to hook up my DJI Rode Wireless Go microphones to the iPhone. But unfortunately when using it with a gimbal the little camera adapter I use that then I've then got to plug in the USB-C cable to the to the receiver it would just be too heavy for the gimbal it pulls it off course I did get a uh, light into 3.5 connectors so i could just plug a lavalier microphone straight in but yeah apparently i still need another adapter cable so i still haven't got it worked out yet 
But yeah, the sooner I get that worked out, the better, because it will make live strings really crispy. Especially the plane spotting live streams when there's a lot of wind. If I can cut out that wind, it will make it a lot better. Quite uh, slippery this track here. Here's another track, Palm Glen track, an easy 290 metres. Running out of time, so I might have to give that one a miss today, unfortunately. Let's have a look at where we are. Okay, I think we're probably only a few hundred more metres to the Brittle track. So let's walk to that T junction then and then suss out how far it's going to take to get to Captain Cook Lookout and whether I've got time to do it or not. But yeah, I'm a little bit stressed about the GoPro because occasionally it does um, stop turning on. And then you've got to pull out the battery to reset it to turn it back on and that's currently what it's done so yeah i can't even uh, just recharge it and continue using it with the battery in it i've got to pull it out first so a bit annoying was definitely keen to try out my drone here on Norfolk Island but I think it's looking less likely I will give it a go now as I'm very new to a drone flying it looks like it could be quite a tricky area Norfolk Island to fly a drone very heavy, heavily forested in some places so I don't want that affecting the GPS or anything like that obviously there's some pretty rugged coastline and hills and also you've got to call up the airport to let them know to ensure there's no flights coming in or out and you've got to put in an exemption letter on the DGI app to fly on Norfolk Island I do have that but yeah it looks like you've got to put that in at the time of flying with no mobile reception that might not even be possible so be rest assured I still want to get drone flying going on the channel but I think the uh, Norfolk Island may not be the right time for me to try it. little pedestrian bypass here that's good makes it a little bit easier these stairs Looking like we're coming up to a T junction here. I think if I can get to Captain Cook's lookout, I know it's about 11, 10 kilometers on the main roads back to town. Mount Bates, Mount Pitt. Yeah, it's just a dead end road by the looks.
Beautiful walk, this one. Alrighty, another sign coming up here. This is a T junction. Red road track, red road car park to our left. Mount Pitt and Mount Bates back there. So I'm guessing this might be the Brittles track over here. Brittles track, easy 1.7 kilometers. Bird Rock, Captain Cook Motor. Brittle Track is here, 1.7 kilometres. Bird, Bird Rock and Captain Cook Monument. Moderate walk with some steep sections. Oh well, I think we'll um, try and get there. Then that way at least uh, getting that there today, we can enjoy a bit more of a chill day tomorrow, having gone to the furthest point on the island. I believe from having gone to the furthest point on the island, I believe all the way from Burnt Pine. Just looking at my watch, we've walked about 8.76 kilometres today. That's the total walking on the whole island. So it is a pretty compact island. But yeah, it can be quite hilly and steep not the most pedestrian friendly either so yeah it's not exactly the quickest walking conditions Captain Cook Monument is that way. Let's have a look at what this sign says here. Bird Rock Track is 760 metres that way. I think we'll go to Captain Cook. Yeah, I think we'll go to Captain Cook. Probably only going to have time to go to one. Absolutely spectacular. If this is not one of the most scenic backdrops for a walk, I don't know what it is. But yeah, they're pretty darn rugged hills here. Pretty darn rugged cliffs. Hopefully we're not too far from Captain Cook's lookout now. 
And then once I get there, I know I can either backtrack the way I came, or maybe there's a main road I can take. Oh well, this looks like a stunning vantage point here. I was thinking it was Captain Cook's lookout, but looks like it continues on. So my recommendation is don't get too close to the edge there. And just like that, this must have to be one of the most stunning views on the whole of Norfolk Island. Look at that, the wild Pacific Ocean out there. A little bit further now to Captain Cook's, so let's continue on, shall we? Just started to sprinkle with rain. Been absolutely excellent conditions the last two days. Surprisingly, not very windy at all either on Norfolk Island. I thought it would be a very windy place being so exposed out in the middle of the ocean. But yeah, surprisingly still fairly mild to slightly warm. A little bit humid. Hopefully we can make it to Captain Cook's now without the rain getting too heavy. But yeah, this walk's turning out to be absolutely incredible. Probably one of the best walks you can probably do in Australia. Albeit we're not even on the Australian mainland. That drizzle is starting to pick up a bit now. So yeah, definitely trying to pick up the pace to get to Captain Cook's lookout. So we can get back to the town by 7 o'clock tonight. Sun goes down at 8 o'clock, so we've still got plenty of time, but yeah, no real time for dawdling anymore. Quite refreshing that rain actually. Certainly not cold. It's certainly not gonna get cold. Even on a rainy night like tonight, still only gonna get down to about a balmy 22 degrees. High humidity will make it feel a lot warmer than that. Yep, and just like that, the rain's coming in.
should be less than a few hundred meters now to the finish. Seeing a proper looking at look out over there, so I think that might be hooks. And just like that, we've made it to Captain Cook. And just like that, we've made it to Captain's Cook Lookout. Five minutes after I arrived, the rain's eased up a little bit, so that's really great. Absolutely stunning views out over to the ocean over there. So from here, from Captain Cook Lookout, one of the most furthermost extremities here on spectacular Norfolk Island. Thank you so much for watching today's Norfolk Island National Park walking tour. As we've taken some walks along some of the most spectacular tracks that you can do on Norfolk Island, including to the summit of spectacular Mount Pitt and Mount Bates, and also down here to the spectacular Captain Cook Lookout with the most rugged coastlines behind me so yeah really hope you have got to experience what some of the national park is like here also done a walking tour from all around the main settlements of burnt pine and kingston on norfolk island so be sure to check out that one as well also done a bit of a walking tour from the nearby norfolk island botanical gardens so be sure to check out that one as well as well as my flight reviews both Qantas in business class over to Norfolk and also my upcoming Air Chathams flight down to Auckland. So be sure to check out those. But from here in spectacular Norfolk Island where the brief bout of rain we just had over the last 10-15 minutes has luckily cleared up. Thanks so much for watching today. If you have enjoyed this video, this hiking video around spectacular Norfolk Island, really appreciate it. do give a like leave your comments down below and most importantly whatever brings you to the channel whether it's hiking stuff driving videos walking tours flight reviews train reviews whatever that might be thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe hit that bell and notification button so you won't miss another one also visit my socials a dedicated instagram page so you can catch up with what i'm doing in the world in real time also got an Aussie Jet Setter YouTube Shorts channel, so check out that as well. And don't forget to join my dedicated Discord server for fans and community of the channel. Here on my website, aussiejetsetter.com.au, hoping to kickstart that off the ground again this year, where you'll be able to find lots of flight reviews, industry news, destination guides, frequent fly hacks and more. But from spectacular Norfolk Island, thanks so much for watching today's hiking video. 
Thanks for watching and stay safe wherever your travels might take you.